Hey, what's going on? This is Bruce with Bowski Studio. I'm here at uh, East Pond, one of my favorite places to paint. It was a beautiful, gorgeous summer day, and I'm going to be painting a 10 by 12 of the view that you can see behind me with the trees. You have a lot of cloud action and all that good stuff, so enjoy the video. Okay, so what I'm going to be working on today is a 10 by 12 panel, and I'm going to be using somewhat of a limited palette and uh, Galkid for my medium. But let me go over the colors here. Hold on. Okay, I'm going to be using um, probably mostly for sketching the burnt umber. Then we uh, that'll be for blocking it in, and then the chromatic black, titanium white, ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, rose matter, and sap green. And here is my view, my setup here. So let's get rolling. I think you're really going to enjoy this video. I had a lot of fun painting this piece and uh, just want to apologize too a little bit. I know I do a lot of, uh, try to do some uh, real time commentary and such, but with this painting I was just kind of really in the zone. I just wanted to focus on painting and uh, of course where I was set up you have a lot of people coming and going. So I think it was for me a little odd enough that I just had a little camera attached to my to my easel so still a little self-conscious about it believe it or not kind of funny in a way other days I just don't care and I get into it but so my usual using a little umber to uh, sketch in you can see a little ghost image from the placement before I kind of enlarged too much and so I went back and scaled it down a tad because I really wanted to play up the cloud action going on today and one thing with clouds you know it's a tricky one if you don't paint them a lot, like uh, really spend some time with them, you know, they can be a challenge uh, for anybody, even if you painted them a lot. But, they, they, you know, you had breeze going on, the clouds coming in and out, and you really have to try to steal uh, information from the different moments that you, you see the clouds moving through the sky. And it's difficult because you don't want to chase shadows, but clouds are kind of different depending on the... Uh, in this particular case, on this day that I was painting, um, they didn't have a lot of super crystallized form, so I could get away with stealing bits and pieces from uh, different time frames as I painted on the painting and bring in some clouds that were not there in the beginning, that sort of thing. So uh, just be a little careful. Um, here I am just kind of mapping out the background tree line trying to keep it a little cooler of course warmer tones advancing and scale helps a lot too and I still am using this technique of taking some white in my skies I don't do it every single time but I have found it useful to essentially get a, a base light tone on and then I work the blues and different colors into that and it seems to give a really nice atmospheric feeling to uh, my skies. So I recommend you try that. Because if you want more, more edges and that sort of thing, you can just put on more paint and plant your strokes. But I like, I like the initial blending effect that uh, you get here. Now, once again, experimenting with my uh, getting into some palette knife work to really get some textures and paint on quickly and you'll see later on that I do my usual uh, tamping down of of the ridges of the paint with uh, my Egbert brush that I have from Rosemary Company love that thing for the purpose of kind of softening edges so it's difficult when you're painting too to really stick with it I mean I, I get into some ugly stages with different subjects uh, occasionally in this case as I was working on the sky with the palette knife work here I was getting a little bit worried but I trusted my instincts and uh, 
skill that you know I've had from painting for years and and have seen this stage many a time kind of come through and become the painting that I envision so you just got to have faith and because uh, with the palette knife you know, for me personally it's you don't get a super lot of control uh, yes I've seen a lot of palette knife paintings out there and depending on the palette knife you have I just don't like to carry too much excessive gear so I'm just using my mixing palette knife I used to use a kind of a long standard palette knife kind of you know maybe about three inches long with a rounded tip but I've switched to these triangular one because I can use that to mix paint and also use to uh, work on paintings much easier so I recommend that in your own kind of uh, painting challenges so you really just kind of getting that paint on there and it is a good way to get it on quick and especially if you're kind of uh, trying trying to uh, uh, race against time for catcher, capturing the uh, lights and darks and that sort of thing also like you hear about quite often um, you know you never really want to use pure white so you can see I've added a little bit of yellow into my clouds to uh, warm them up a bit and one thing that's interesting with the palette knife technique is you really get effects that are very difficult to achieve if at all with a paintbrush so I definitely recommend experimenting with the technique sorry for the wobble of the camera it's a kind of a attached to the tripod so I think it gives a nice view of the piece though Hey, here's what I got going on and I'm just trying to get some quick color notations here get a sense of the place and then uh, manipulate with the brush but show you some detail shots here it's a long way from finish but it's getting there here's what I'm talking about using actually I was using my angle brush but I have I will be using also my Egbert uh, brush later on this is really good opportunity because you have the very wet paint kind of dense on there it's not super thick strokes but you got it to do the technique of blending edges you really got to kind of have some quantity of paint on your surface or it's just really not going to work effectively so just tickling edges moving paint around strategically kind of patting at it a bit step back take a look and, and study it some more and that's what I'll do over the whole surface of the painting and if you feel like you've maybe mixed a little too much I don't want to kill all the energy of the palette knife but uh, if you think you've gone too far just pull back in more paint and repeat and eventually you'll find out what level you need to do it at for a, a certain effect it's just kind of repetition and and practicing different techniques that sort of thing now knocking in some fresh highlights on other clouds you start bringing out strings of clouds and you can see I'll plant the stroke and not mess with it only after I've get, got what I've wanted on there will I tickle some edges and, and blend a little bit really add some drama to the scene and, and freshness and solidity starts to develop in the clouds because they do have some form even there it's a, it's a really weird thing you know it's like they're gaseous but yet they can still have some form depending on the light effects and I really like you I'm really getting into you know using these flat brushes uh, synthetics I, I'm still enjoying them quite a quite a bit still working out the perfect brands I do like the Robert Simmons uh, sapphire brand a lot but trying out some other ones too that seem to be doing okay what I like to do sometimes when I order brushes so I'll to try some different lines I'll just you know maybe get one or two of four different lines and then try them out and as I find favorites then I'll know what to commit to to get a grouping rather than take a chance on ordering a set or something like that good cost-effective way now I'm just adding some you know bits of human existence there along the edge of the lake 
And there's nothing like having a, a beautiful summer day like this on Lakes in Maine. And I get my kayak out and I'm just putzing around, paddling, doing some swimming, maybe taking some pictures and of course doing painting from the kayak. This one of course was from the boat launch, but um, really loving that new kayak for the for the painting adventures. Very, very versatile. And you can see I keep going back to get paint on the brush. You, you really don't want to apply too many strokes, especially when you have you know, a fair amount of wet paint on the surface. You want to be careful of that. And you'll see later on how those uh, reflections shape up. I, I was really happy with my choice of uh, the result later on there. You'll see just getting some of those uh, evergreen trees in, the typical main iconic sort of look that you have touching and shaping some of the foreground trees by painting the negative around them. Not a, not a groundbreaking technique, but um, some artists may not uh, really think of doing that in some cases. You really need to play edges both ways. <clears throat> you want to be careful because you got that wet sky behind there. That's why I pulled out from the inside of the color of the tree outward rather than the other way because you only get one or two strokes. Now here I am with the technique that I, I, I was not liking those reflections. The water movement was uh, kind of all over the place so I just decided to extend the, the reflections. You didn't really see this in real life but you know it's believable because there are times when you you'll see this effect. Um, just the wind and, and the particular area where of this lake, you have, it's like a little cove area, so the water reacts differently than open water. So um, I really, I was really happy with the, making a commitment to wipe out what was there, paint over it, and that sort of thing. So because I knew I didn't like what was there, you know, and if I would have tried to save it, because and, and oh, I hope I don't mess it up, you know, I just you got to go for it always paint it over or wipe it out and, and start that section over so something to do you see that nice little highlight I just put in there with the house and the water I like how I handled that just a quick little hit with the brush and bam you got reflections there sorry for the dappled sunlight it was kind of starting to move around on me there but I did get a new plain air umbrella that I think will be more useful than the one I had so That'll be kind of on its maiden voyage this weekend with a workshop I'm teaching. So looking forward to that. And once again, taking that Egbert brush and just very lightest touch pulling across those reflection marks. And look at that. You really get a sheen to the water. I was super happy with that effect. And uh, you just got to be very gentle about it and decisive so hope you enjoyed the video and please I'd like to hear your comments let me know what you think and until the next adventure sorry so long posting but happens sometimes and I try to get on schedule but summer's been a little crazy so until next time take care okay I'm back from uh, East Pond uh, just finished up the painting, drove home, and uh, it's got some activity that I really like. There's a few things that I'll probably work on, but overall, first impressions, back away from the subject, is I really like it. Lots of energy, and I like how I handled the reflections in the water. Just suggested, got to do a little more there. Because I had something uh, there before that I didn't like, I wiped out and repainted it. But uh, sky's really interesting. So, yeah, overall. Okay, everybody, this wraps up the uh, video. I want to thank you for watching. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Check out more content in the future. For everyone else, thank you for supporting the videos and uh, commenting on them. And I invite everybody to comment. Let me know your opinions things you do to paint and when you're working on certain subjects maybe and uh, take a look at my Facebook page Habowski Studio you can like and follow there and my website link will be in the description box so until the next video take care bye